Okay, I'm going to do a review of Chapter 9, the Endocrine System. Alright, so what are the endocrine functions? Basically, it's a control mechanism that controls all the different uh, functions of the human body. How does it do this? It does this by way of hormones. Hormones are produced by ductless glands, meaning that they don't have, it's not a substance like an enzyme or mucus that's being secreted to an apical surface or a hollow organ. Um, hormones are actually secreted into the bloodstream and then they travel throughout the body. Um, we have three classes of hormones. The first one being protein hormones, which are made out of amino acids, and they get into cells via second messenger system. Then we have steroid hormones that are made out of cholesterol or steroids, and they get into their target cells by way of direct gene activation. And then we have a third class of hormones that are called prostaglandins. Um, they do not get secreted in the bloodstream and travel throughout the body. They specifically have a localized effect in the area with which they are secreted. They are um, fatty acid in nature and they have a localized effect. Again, hormones circulate throughout the bloodstream, but they only affect their specific target cells. And these target cells contain protein receptors um, that end up joining or combining with a hormone and that's basically the go signal for that hormone to have an, um, an effect on that target cell. So here's the direct gene activation. Okay, it's done by steroid hormones. Well, why? Why can they directly activate genes or directly activate transcription? Because steroid hormones are lipid soluble. They can pass right through the plasma membrane and they can go right into the nucleus of a cell. So the protein receptors for steroid hormones are located in the nucleus of their target cells. They form this complex here, and then this complex ends up coming over here and directly binds onto DNA and specifically transcribes a, whatever gene that is needed to be transcribed. And then you come through the process of protein synthesis of transcription and translation, and a new protein is made. So again, steroid hormones do direct gene activation because their lipid soluble can go right through the cell into the plasma membrane. Second messenger system. Well, who does second messenger system? Hormone, what type here? Okay. Protein hormones. Protein hormones, because they are hydrophilic, they cannot get through the plasma membrane, which is shown here in purple. So what do they do? They bind with their protein receptor that's located on the surface of the plasma membrane and this facilitates a reaction that actually turns on an enzyme. Okay, see this cyclinase here? ASE is indicative of an enzyme. This enzyme then catalyzes a reaction that causes a second messenger to be created, like cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP can then go into the nucleus and stimulate a specific type of gene or genes to be transcribed and translated. So again, protein hormones, because of their chemical composition, they're hydrophilic, they cannot get through the plasma membrane. Protein receptors are located on the outside of the cell. They activate a second messenger that does the will of the, of the protein hormone within the inside of the cell. Here's a list of our various endocrine glands, and I'm going to go through each of these glands and the major hormones that they produce and what their functions are. So first, if you want to think about it kind of within the body, where things are located, we'll start with the endocrine glands that are located in the brain. So first is the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is the connection between the endocrine system and the nervous system, and it produces two hormones. Antidiuretic hormone, which is involved in water balance and water retention. It um, decreases urine output. And then the other one is oxytocin. Oxytocin is involved with creating strong uterine contractions that allow for childbirth and for milk injection in lactating women. Um, the hypothalamus produces these two hormones. However, it does not store them. That work is done by the posterior pituitary. So the posterior pituitary does not make any hormones of, it own, of its own. It just stores those made by the hypothalamus. Next is the anterior pituitary, which can be, considered, can be considered our master gland. It produces six hormones. Two that are, that are here in black, those hormones actually go out and directly affect target cells. The remaining four that are in purple are a different type of hormone called a tropic hormone, which we'll talk about in a minute. Growth hormone, basically um, 
Growth hormone stimulates the growth cell activities of all cells. Prolactin. Prolactin is involved in milk production in women. They have no idea what the target cells are in men. The following four, like I said in purple, are all tropic hormones. What does a tropic hormone do? Tropic hormones stimulate other endocrine glands to make more hormones. So if we look at adrenocorticotropic hormone, it stimulates the adrenal cortex gland to produce hormones. Thyroid stimulating hormone, it produces the thyroid gland to produce its hormones. We have follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone that are both gonadotropic hormones. They stimulate the gonads, ovaries, or testes to produce their hormones. And then finally, we have the pineal gland located in the brain that produces melatonin. And melatonin will regulate our sleep-wake cycle. And in some animals, um, it can actually regulate their reproductive cycles and when they ovulate. Endocrine glands in the neck, okay? We have the thyroid gland and the parathyroid gland. Thyroid gland is that butterfly-shaped gland that's around the trachea, and the parathyroid gland is four to eight little nodules of glandular tissue positioned actually on top of the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland makes two hormones, thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, so I say thyroid hormones because there's more than one. They are involved in metabolism and dealing with the way in which the body uses and metabolizes glucose, okay? The other one is calcitonin. Calcitonin ends up being stimulated when we have a blood calcium level which is greater than the homeostatic level. And what calcitonin does is that it activates osteoblasts to lay down new bone matrix within our skeleton. Parathyroid hormone, which is made by the parathyroid gland, is basically the antagonist of calcitonin. Parathyroid hormone gets stimulated to be produced when our calcium levels are below the homeostatic level. And what it does is that it stimulates osteoclasts to break down bony matrix and deposit calcium into the bloodstream. Endocrine glands located in the chest and abdominal cavities. Thymus. Thymus is that one located in the chest, kind of like behind the sternum. It makes thymosine. Thymosine is involved in T lymphocyte maturation. T lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell. They are produced, sorry, don't know what that is. Um, T lymphocytes are produced in the red bone marrow and then they go to the thymus gland to mature. The pancreas, all right? The pancreas makes two hormones, insulin and glucagon, and they also counteract each other. Insulin ends up being secreted when our blood glucose levels are very high. Insulin is the gatekeeper that basically causes all of our body cells to take up glucose. Glucagon, on the other hand, is activated when our blood glucose level is too low. It stimulates glycogen stores, which are really only found in the liver, to be broken down we know that glycogen is a storage form of glucose, so when our glucose level is too low, it stimulates glycogen to be broken down, and that glucose would then be excreted into our blood. The adrenal gland, which sits on top of the kidneys, remember, adrenal on top of the kidneys. Basically, two glands in one. There's the adrenal cortex, which is the outer portion, and the adrenal medulla, which is the inner portion. If we look at the cortex, the cortex is even divided into small, into three different regions. The outer region, oh, let me back up one second. Corticosteroids is the general term for the different hormones that the adrenal cortex produces. The outermost layer produces mineral corticoids. The middle layer, glucocorticoids, and the innermost layer, sex hormones. The adrenal medulla, okay, produces one hormone, well, two hormones, 95% of it is epinephrine, about 5% is norepinephrine, and it's stimulated by... <coughs> the sympathetic nerve fibers or the sympathetic nervous system. Epinephrine gets your body ready for that fight or flight causing um, bronchial dilation, vasal dilation, increases the amount of glucose ready available for the cells for our muscles. Okay. And then finally we have the gonads, ovaries and the testes. Ovaries produce two hormones, estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen, <coughs> sorry guys, I'm losing my voice. Estrogen is involved with developing secondary sex characteristics and also um, has a role in the monthly cycle in building up um, the uterine lining um, of the, the endometrial lining in the uterus um, for 
potential fertilization to occur. Um, progesterone is actually the pregnancy hormone. Um, it is produced by uh, the corpus luteum, which is basically what's left over when an egg is ovulated outside of the ovary, a follicle is left behind, and that becomes the corpus luteum. Um, progesterone, again, builds up even further the endometrial lining of the uterus in preparing for potential fertilization to occur. Testes produce testosterone. Testosterone um, causes male secondary sex characteristics, and it also oversees or aids in sperm production. How are endocrine glands stimulated? We know that they're stimulated in three ways. They're stimulated to produce hormones by other hormones, those tropic hormones. They're stimulated to produce hormones by humors, or basically values of different chemicals located in our blood, like um, glucose, uh, calcium, different ions like sodium and potassium. And then fin finally, they're stimulated to produce hormones by the nervous system. And a good example of that is the adrenal medulla being stimulated to produce epinephrine and norepinephrine by the sympathetic nervous system. Um, I think I covered mostly everything.